Today I will show you how you can add some cool VFX visual effects on your photos in Photoshop. So let's start. Hey guys, it's Neymar and welcome to another really fun episode. So today we will have a lot of fun adding those visual effects to our photo in Photoshop and we will have a lot of fun along the way. You will learn a lot of interesting tips, tricks and techniques from this tutorial, so stay tuned till the end and enjoy the ride. So let's jump straight into Photoshop and let the fun begin. Right guys, we are here in Photoshop and this is the photo that we will play with today. As you can see, really cool photo of some star fighters fighting in the space, similar like Star Wars scene. And it's pretty cool one, but it's lacking something. We are missing some effects like uh, engine fire here, maybe some laser, some explosion, etc. So we will add all of this today and I will show you how to match the perspective of, of all these effects. Pretty simple in Photoshop and you can then use later similar techniques to add some kind of cool effects to your photos. Especially that this is a wide angle shot, so it's a little bit tricky to match the perspective of those lasers, but I will show you one really cool trick how you can match it really easily. So first what I like to do is to add some uh, engine fire, or however you want to call it. So it's really pretty simple and straightforward, but we need to play a little bit. All those effects take some time to add it. So this is our fighter, this one. Actually, I made this scene in a Cinema 4D, it's just a simple plain scene and I will not of course show you that because this is not a tutorial about Cinema 4D, but we are having a photo, we want to add some effects, I'm talking too much, I know. Alright, so this is engine, alright, and uh, what I like to do, I like to put this layer into famous linear dodge blending mode and first what I like to do is to add some white color right here, just white color with a really soft brush as you can see, like that, and maybe 50% opacity, smaller brush, and just tap a few times to add that white color, right? Pretty cool. Maybe a bit more. Then we will create another linear dodge uh, layer in linear dodge blending mode, and then go for a little bit reddish tint, something like, maybe all the way saturated, but brighter. Okay, a little bit bigger brush and then just tap a few times as you can see we are already getting something here then a new layer again linear dodge blending mode a little bit darker color even bright uh, even bigger brush okay just tap a few times and this is already cool as you can see we already have some really cool effect but what I like to do here is to add some kind of I don't know muzzles or whatever uh, here, so we will create another layer again, linear dodge blending mode. And this time, I will go again with maybe a little bit orange, brighter, something like this. I want 100% opacity just for this. Make a brush smaller, click once here, once here, once here, and once here. And now, what I like to do, I like to use the smudge tool a little bit bigger than it's. Uh, this brush that we will use later. Strength, it depends of what kind of effect you want to achieve. Around 50, it's okay for this. And I just want to do like this, see? This is cool. So just... Just smudge it a bit, a few times. If you want a longer trail, you can just go... And follow, follow, try to follow the lines of the motors here, actually of whatever wherever you're adding the effect. So it's really cool. And I like it. Also what you can do here, this is, I don't know how, how to call, M for muzzles, ah, okay. And I can go here and add hue and saturation adjustment layer, clip it to affect only this, and I can change the color. So maybe I want more reddish, more, I don't know, greenish, yellowish, whatever, maybe less saturated, maybe brighter, maybe darker, ah, not darker, but. So let's see, maybe something like, like this looks cool. And now I want to merge everything here, group it and call it uh, engine, engine VFX. Okay, and this is it. This is, let me show you really quickly. This is before and this is vroom after adding those effects. Okay, we can add even more things here. Let me show you. You can build the effect little by little and create really cool uh, overall look. So I can add another layer linear dodge blending mode 
and again with some kind of reddish color a bit darker and bigger brush maybe brush all right maybe 10 or 20 percent let's go with 20 percent and just add even more lighting effects around like this this look, looks cool let me see before and after yeah i really like it so you can play with this and add even even more and even more whatever but this is pretty pretty cool i really like it all right now let's go and add the next effect let's add some lasers firing from this first fighter and let me show you how you can easily match the perspective of the laser beams and uh, add really cool effect to the image so let's do it okay first let's collapse this engine vfx and let's create a new one let's say this is laser okay this is just the layer name but i will rename the group so I will not bothering now renaming the layer for this tutorial. So for lasers, we need to do something. First, let me show you really quickly. I want to use white color, smaller brush, and uh, I want 100% opacity. And I want to add some lasers like it's going from this gun there, there. Now some, some lasers, but um, this doesn't look good at all. So we need to find a good way to add all of this properly. So there is a cool trick by finding a proper perspective for this uh, fighter, for this aircraft right here at the front. So I will use a line tool. It's under the shape tool. You can press just U on a keyboard as a shortcut or just find a line tool. I will go and use the white stroke. I don't want to fill and uh, this is it. So now with the line tool, we are just making some lines, but we are not making just any lines. We want to match the lines that are following for example these guns so this is one line right here for example then we have another line right here okay we have another line right here and we have another line right here as you can see all those lines are intercrossing in one dot right there and that's like a perspective uh, horizon line for this aircraft only for this and this is space so there's practically no horizon line but we want to find the where the all lines perspective lines from this uh, fighter are intersection intersecting and this is actually the line where the laser beams will follow so this is the direction of the laser beams and now i will group all those lines press ctrl or command g and call perspective lines and this is just here for helping us to nail the proper direction of the lasers we will later delete it so now let's go with the lasers all right first one what i like to do i like to find the proper size maybe a bit smaller like this right and i will create dot press and hold shift and create our first laser maybe this will be the length of the laser now we'll press ctrl or command t to enter transform mode if I press and hold control guys or command on the Mac, I can move those uh, corners in the individually, but also I can go right click perspective and just nail this to match the perspective. Actually, we want to have narrow beam at the front because it's going further from us and it's getting narrower and narrower. So we want to have something like this. We don't want to have same width of the laser beam at the beginning and at the end we want to narrow her uh, here at the end so this is cool maybe something like this i will press ok and this looks much much better so now there there is one cool trick how to move the lasers along this line so i want to make a copy of this one by pressing ctrl or command j okay this is our second laser and then i will press ctrl or command t to enter transform tool and this is photoshop 2020 and i don't know from why why uh, in this version of photoshop and i think the latest uh, 2019 uh, we cannot see the anchor point here in the center but in previous photoshop version you can see that anchor point i don't know if there is an option some some option that we need to check to see it i don't know but what we need to do is press and hold alt or option key and click on those perspective intercrossing lines all right right there and now if we can see that anchor point it would move from here all the way here so it's still here as you can see those uh, arrows 
angled around this anchor point, but we just cannot see. So why I'm moving there? Because now if I'm holding alter option key and move this, I will scale this perspectively and it will follow this line. It will go all the way and vanish in this vanishing point in this uh, intersection dot there. So this is our second laser. I will put it right there. Okay. And then I will make a copy of the first one. Again, control command J and move it right here. Control or command T rotate it, zoom it. I want to match the perspective right here, the angle actually. Okay. This is cool. And again, I can go maybe again, control command T alt click on the dot right there and alt press and hold alt and hold it and move it like this. So I will put this one maybe somewhere here. Okay. And then copy it, control command J again, control or command T alt click here. And this is it. So as you can see, this is really cool. I will go with this one right there. Like it's hitting this one, this fighter right there. So we have two. I will again copy the first one and I will fast forward this because it's completely the same procedure. Copy, match the angle and then control command T, press and hold alt, click on that intersection line uh, dot and then just holding alt scaling perspectively. It's easy like that. All right guys, and that's it. I just finished with the positioning of the laser beams in the perspective. It's perfect. It's really cool. And now what we like to do is to add some glow around the laser beams to add even better effect overall. So now I like to group all these layers that are representing the laser beams, control or command G. Let's just check. Yes, I will call it laser. Lasers. All right and uh, i will hide the perspective lines i don't want to delete it yet because i will need it later i will show you but i want to hide it and now what i like to do is to just double click on the layer group here and uh, go with the outer glow so outer glow okay choose the color this orange not bad so maybe more reddish and just see the size and the spread so spread it's okay to this, this number depends of the image size. So the image size and the size of the, in this case, laser beam. So you need to experiment with this. So it goes like this, maybe. Just find a proper combination of these things. Like this is cool. We can go with the screen or color dodge. So screen is cool here. And uh, let me see, maybe if I go with this smaller now. Definitely, I will go just with this one and here will be 45 maybe. That's cool, I will press OK. And the beauty of all this, we can go again back to these effects, double click on outer glow effect here and just change everything. So this is it and I'm pretty happy how this looks. We can now add some lasers from this fighter right there and let's let's do this. We can just make again those lines, but matching this fighter right here. Let's see, it's firing right at this guy. But actually, we don't need it because, as you can see, we can just make one line just for you to see. So basically, it's it's going like this. So we will go. We will have one laser beam. One laser beam like this direction right there. Okay. Yes, I want to continue. So just see something like we can also transform it maybe something like this but this is almost straightforward and this this will not fire because this laser will hit this and this will fall apart and explode and you will see later so we will only have fire from this one and uh, let's create another one another laser beam and i will use again white color smaller brush something like this from here to here and of course this will be same go to perspective this will be much wider okay like that all right maybe 
a bit smaller too. Let me see. I make it shorter, like like that, and it will be somewhere here. Just match this angle. Okay, and I will create another one. Control Command J, and just move it here and make it bigger. Nothing special. So this is it. All right, and I want to colorize this differently. So I will again group this. I can use the same effect that I created here by holding Alt or Option key, drag it and put it here. I just copying the effect, but I want to go inside this and I want to change the color to some kind of green. So this is pretty cool. And also I just want to make this smaller because those are smaller ones. So something like this looks cool. And uh, this is it for, for the lasers. But now we need to make some muzzles, fire muzzles around these guns right there and uh, this gun right here. So let's let's do this. Let's delete this shape because I don't need it anymore. But let's do with those muzzles. So here we will go fire muzzle, all right? And uh, I will do similar things, guys. I will go with the linear dot blending mode. Actually, this needs to be below the fighter because it's easier for me than, uh, than to make the selection of this. So muzzle will be like this, okay? And uh, this one will be smaller, maybe 30% opacity because it's already fired. And then again, new layer, linear dodge blending mode, choose the color, I will go with red and just, just add the effect, that's it. Nothing, nothing special, it's really easy. So this is how it looks. We can go with another one, linear dodge blending mode, maybe darker red like this, maybe bigger. Yeah, that's it. So this is cool. We also can go to the previous one, go with the smudge tool and just try to smudge this out like, like this. It has some kind of star position, I don't know, uh, shape not position. Right, so this is it. We can do this with uh, also with the uh, white color down below the first one. So just to have some kind of different effect. Of course, if you want, you can do it. If you don't want, I'm just giving you some ideas and I'm rushing here, but it's pretty cool. So this is fired and we can select everything, group it, right? And this is fire muzzle and we can add hue and saturation adjustment layer, clip it to affect only the group and just match the color better. So something like this looks cool. But also we can do another layer at the top of the fighter. This is uh, again, fire muzzle light. And I will go to this linear dodge blending mode and just add a little bit of the effect but with the brush not with all right on this the gun itself that's cool so that's cool okay and we can add a little bit here but no this is already fired and the laser is all the way there okay so this is pretty good i really like it and now let's do the explosion oh no let's let's go right here before that let's create another green green fire muzzle right and let's choose a green color like this and add it here. But below this, by holding control or command key, you're making a layer below the current one. Below this, I want to use white, right? I want to add white inside of the green. And the green and your white, all right. This is cool. Okay, this needs to be in linear dodge blending mode. So this is fired. This is maybe too bright so we can lower the brightness. This is pretty awesome. And maybe another one right there, linear dodge blending mode. We're just playing with these blending modes and uh, adding these effects. So this is pretty, pretty cool, right? Maybe maybe something like this. Okay, so this, this is all about the uh, lasers and the effects. You can invest a little bit more time and play with this and have even 
even more interesting and better effect overall. But this is me rushing through the tutorial and showing you the techniques, how you can do this. Now let's create the explosion of this uh, second fighter. Let's uh, chop out the, the, the wing and uh, just add some kind of explosion, some debris, etc. And final, uh, finalize this overall. And I will show one uh, cool idea that you can do later at the top of everything. So let's do it. All right, let's find this fighter. There's a cool way to find layers if you have a lot of layers and you don't want, you don't know which one to select by holding, by going to move tool and then holding control or command key, you can just click on the layer and it will select that layer. So you can see fighter one, fighter two, this is fighter two. You can really easily select all the layers. So I will go to the lasso tool and just select this wing, press shift control J or shift command J on a Mac to cut this part of the wing so I have it on a separate layer and I will go to the transform tool control or command T rotate it a little bit not make I don't want to make it bigger I just want to make it move it from the fighter like it's exploded and it's going away all right and uh, yeah I, I forgot to show one really cool thing about the lasers I will do that right after the explosion so we will do something cool to layers, lasers too. All right, so I want to put a wing right there. This is wing. Okay, and uh, let's find the photo. I will use this photo for the explosion. Okay, I will just go paste it here, rotate it something like this, put it in a screen blending mode and use levels. I can go to uh, image adjustment levels or use shortcut control command L. Just add even more blacks because I want to get rid of these borders. So something like this is cool. Then control or command T transform mode. I want to make everything smaller and to put it right there, maybe rotate it. You just need to find some cool photos for the explosion or whatever you're doing. So this is pretty good. And I want to use eraser tool just to erase this. I don't need this. Okay, this is pretty good. I like it and what I can do there is a cool trick I can make a copy of this layer control command J Y look at these I don't know fire something fireflies I don't know how I say it. right and now they're more visible and now on this layer I want to delete the fire because I don't want fire to be twice as bright just these things flying away part of small parts of the fires fire all right and now I want to select both of these layers Control or command E to merge them into one and then again back into screen blending mode and this is it I have explosion Explosion effect right there. This is cool and uh, Let me see I have a wing right there Okay, this is my wing it will be here perfect and now let's add some light effects and colors to the vehicle itself and to the wing so to do that i will go with new layer everything is the same guys like like we did before linear dodge blending mode choose a color in this case i will use red darker one and uh, just just add a color to these elements as you can see right there not too much we need to go with several layers so another one maybe a bit brighter a bit brighter okay you can see this is cool just adding some color here and of course invest more time play with this but this is a really cool way to add these kind of effects okay i'm pretty happy with this in this moment so before after really cool explosion really cool now let's add some debris so Let's go all the way above explosion, named layer debris. And now in this moment, I will use my debris brush that I created, I don't know, a long time ago in my tutorial. Here is the tutorial if you want to watch it to see how to create this kind of brushes, or you can just go to my website and purchase this brush for just $1, it's your choice. So I will go right here, right click and uh, go with, with this one right yeah this is my brush i will choose some color from the vehicle here and just add some kind of a debris maybe some yellow too like it's everything is falling apart a little bit reddish maybe a little bit bigger I don't know. 
some something let's see maybe black something like this looks cool so I'm just adding this yeah, it looks a little bit better maybe even bigger and uh, yeah just a few of them more so this is pretty cool I like it just a touch to the explosion and also you can add some smoke if you want there's a way to do that I will again use my smoke brush you can watch this tutorial right here to see how you can create your own smoke cloud dust brushes or you can purchase a whole set of these brushes that I will use now for just one dollar again on my website the link is down there in the description so I will go and use this cloud brush okay and I will use black and white colors so this is black this is white and just combination of those colors I'm just playing with the smoke like this and just a little bit of the effect not too much okay so let me see this is pretty cool this is smoke and this is before and after smoke just a small detail but it's cool all right now let me show you what I wanted to do with the lasers I wanted to blur lasers too because they're really fast and I want to add a little bit of motion blur to all the lasers but the problem is if you're adding a classical motion blur we can just choose one direction so we don't want that we want to make like a perspective motion blur which is really cool effect and there is fortunately one really cool way to do it so let me show you how to do that first let's find all the lasers these are these are the lasers all right this is a group for the lasers what I like to do I like to copy a group control or command J okay then press control or command E to merge all the all the elements all the layers in a group into one layer as you can see right here and then I want to put this into screen back into screen so now we have the same effect but merged into one layer so this is green laser all right and now what we will do we will go here with the laser copy right click and convert to smart object just in case let me show you what I like to do here now we'll go to filter blur and then radial blur right but we will not choose the spin we will choose zoom okay and this needs to be centered by default it's centered like this and uh, if we now apply something like I don't know 10 amount of 10 you can see that uh, uh, it's not not doing much because but as you can see it's it's strange it's not there it's not there so let's undo it let's go maybe 34 just to see the effect so you can see that the the path the, the perspective of this uh, blur effect is not right so we need to find the proper position of this and we can just move 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 and try to find a proper position but we will not do much we can guess it in one moment but there is one easier way to do that so I want to put it in the center okay I want to go with the 10 for now and uh, actually first I want to delete everything let's go from the start I want to delete this and there is a cool way to do it so just one more time go back to the effect radial blur you can see the shape of this portion of the I don't know the screen it's squared so this represents the image and unfortunately it's square I don't know why Adobe don't want to make this uh, like it can be changed to match the portion of your the proportion of your image but unfortunately it's square but we we can go around this by making our image square and here our perspective lines are going to help us a lot so I will make them visible this is the center of the laser beam so this needs to be the center of the square I will go to the crop tool go one by one aspect ratio right and I just want to put this in the center of the square so something like I'm using arrows to nudge it a bit something like this all right and also make sure to not check this delete crop pixels because you don't want to delete everything that you cropped you want to recrop it later so now I want to make this bigger just to have all my lasers in this uh, crop um, rectangle right and I will press ok so this is temporary and now I will go to lasers I just want to high perspective like go to lasers go to filter blur radial blur and now we can just zoom maybe 20 20 is too much but I want to show you just 
quickly. And you can see this is zoomed in the perspective. So it's really cool effect. Everything is really nice. All the lasers are matched in the perspective and that's cool. So I will now double click on the radial blur and maybe this is the match, maybe 15, let me see. 15 is cool, pretty cool, All right? And I can, I can stick with this. And also we can go to green laser and let me see one and two, we can just use regular filter blur, motion blur, because we don't have much of perspective there. So just match this. That's cool. And go to the another one and something like this. This is cool. All right, and now we need to recrop everything back. Again, crop tool. I like to use 16 by nine aspect ratio for this. Go back down. Just, just crop it however you want it. So this is it. And let me see, this is pretty okay for me. Maybe I'll move it a bit up like this. All right. And uh, press okay. This is it. So now we have our lasers moving perspective blur like how I like to call it because it's blurred in the perspective. And this is pretty cool for whatever you want to use it to blur it in the perspective. Maybe cars are going too fast and you want to add this really cool blur that, has, that is going towards the one dot, the vanishing point in the perspective. You can use this method, just make the whole image squared, find the center, find those intercrossing lines and just blur everything. It will be awesome. All right, so now we're basically done with this. What you can do now, you can add even more effects to other um, fighters here, just the same muzzles, etc. I will not waste the time to do that because it's completely the same like I did with all of these muzzles. And uh, just repeat the procedure. And also, one really cool thing is you can colorize these fighters. So for example, we want to colorize this one, the first one right here. I will go to the fighter, create a new layer, put it in a color blending mode and just choose a color. Maybe choose some kind of a bluish color, maybe something like this brush, but regular. We can use this kind of brush, 100% opacity. So now you can colorize maybe the gun. Oops. Just to go like this. Maybe you want to just go and colorize this you can invest a bit time but this is just me showing you how you can do it of course if you invest a little bit more time it would be nice you can use some selection tools for this maybe this part right maybe you can i know i'm just baiting i will show you the finished version but i need to invest a bit time in this maybe you want to make some kind of uh, selection with the pen tool, something like this, all right? And then I know, paint something here, maybe paint the other gun, etc. And you can paint the whole, whole um, aircraft however you want. It's really cool. And uh, after investing a little bit of time in this and adding some details and adding a little, little bit better selection, etc., you can have something like this. As you can see, it's really cool. I painted uh, using the same matter right here and also added a few effects uh, on the screen, but it's pretty cool. So this is my version that I created uh, by investing a little bit more time into everything, but it's pretty much the same. I used exactly the same techniques like I did here. After you finish everything, you can just go to the first layer, merge everything into one layer with shift control alt T or shift command option E on a Mac and just use and colorize this use some color grading methods, you can use a uh, camera raw and uh, just play with, I don't know, add a little bit more contrast, maybe add some textures and clarity for this, add some punch, maybe haze it a bit, I don't know, maybe you can go and add some kind of bluish tint in the shadows. You can see I like to add a vignette, I love it actually. Maybe you can go with the ra gradient uh, filter and add a little bit of the brightness right there Okay, on this side, like that, and uh, I don't know, you can go back here and maybe sharpen it. This is just me giving you some ideas, but 
it's now up to you to practice and have fun with with all of this you can press ok and this is before this is after really cool effect you can add even some lens uh, flares if you want i have i have some set of lens flares right here that you can purchase on my website the link is down there in the description you can create your own maybe i want to use this one and uh, just move it right there put it into screen blending mode as you can see it's really cool you can change the color with hue and saturation adjustment layer maybe something like this lower maybe the saturation and also you can lower you can lower the opacity of the flare just to have small effects a little impact on the image before and after you can do whatever you want with these cool effects right guys so that's it for today i really hope that you learn something nice and cool and that you will be able to apply this knowledge to your own images to add some cool effects to your own images to make them even more interesting punchy and I don't know, this is just a space scene, but you can apply the same uh, methods, same techniques to whatever you're doing. I don't know whatever uh, kind of project you have, but this is a really cool way to practice and to add some cool effects at the top of everything. If you have any questions regarding to this episode, just please leave me a comment down there in the comment section down below. I will be glad to answer it. And also guys, if you appreciate this content, if you like this episode, just press the like button, share it with your friends, don't forget to subscribe in case you're not already and also ring that bell to get notified about all the future episodes. Also, if you want to help me to make this channel even bigger and better, you can do that by visiting my Patreon page. The link is down there in the description. You have everything in the description practically. And uh, you can help me there. You, you will see what is the point there. And also you will get some things in return like PSD files that I'm using for my photo manipulations, etc. Just check it out. Right? Have fun experiment and see you guys in my next fun episode. Bye-bye.